Well, today we're going to continue with our 25 years as Johannesburg Christian Church. We started last week. Um, this year, um, or today, I should say, today, this week, um, you know, 25 years ago, um, there was a new startup that happened. In fact, I forgot to send the picture. I wanted you to show the picture. Um, Google turned 25 this, this, just last week, believe it or not. You know, it just so happens Google's 25 years old. But, you know, and I think about that, but we just sang something. What a wonderful name. We just sang about our great God. And the great things that he does. Google cannot. Google is not more powerful, even though people think that, you know, you can grab and look things up. God knows more. God knows all. And, and that's why we come here. Um, but more powerful than Google is God started up this church in 1998. And, and if you think of all the people and all the families and all the different things that have gone on over the years... You know, the many years, the hard work, all the people, all the prayers, all the, all the Bible studies, all the, just the different things that happen between children's church and youth groups and men's groups and women's groups and, and trips and things like that. What this community has did in 25 years in this location right here, right here, and we get to honor one of those people today, and we're going to talk about that. And speaking of that, I do see somebody that... Um, that I'd like to recognize real fast. Last week we had a special speaker, Denny Freeman, Pastor Denny Freeman, Farmer D. But his, yes, it was fantastic. Denny did a fantastic job. But we have his wife, Sandy. Sandy, if you don't mind just standing up just to show us who you are. We missed you last week. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sandy. Thank you. So, and it just goes to prove you that when people work in one accord, when people work in one accord, like the original church in Acts 1 and 2, when we do that, great things can happen for God, even at the ends of the earth. And if you think about Jerusalem to us, it's pretty much the ends of the earth they would have thought back then. So saying that, um, um, we have a special lady, Mary Tomaski, is going to share with us today. But I want to tell you something about Mary. You know, the church trusted Mary so much. This is an amazing thing that happened. I came and spoke for the very first time in January 2020. It was the first week. Uh, it was actually the second Sunday of January that year. And the board uh, scheduled to go out to eat afterwards. But God had Mary fly into town because you were out of town. You came back into town for whatever purpose, but you were here, and you were able to be here that Sunday, and we were able to go have you join the board with uh, my family, and we went and had breakfast, or uh, we ate after, after service. The board trusted Mary so much, they wanted her blessing upon whoever would become your next pastor. We had some serious stuff that we were taking care of at that time, and, and saying that, you know, it's like, you're trusted. You're trusted, Mary. You're trusted by the board. You know, our, our discussion was a very serious matter. And what I heard come out of Mary's mouth were three things. There's three things that I definitely heard. The first was love. It was all about love. And God is love. So I knew Mary was a godly woman. The second thing was forgiveness, wanting forgiveness. Mary wants forgiveness, and in, in, in not for herself at the moment, but in, in different, uh, we all need forgiveness. So receive that forgiveness from God. Receive the forgiveness from this cross, what happened on the cross. And the third was, Mother Mary wanted to protect her children and her flock. And, and Mary had protection. On, and so she talked about love, forgiveness, and protection. And I thought that was incredible incredible um plus the board trusted her and just won the blessing you know take it back to 1998 and and denny needed a team around him and and mary was part of that team in the scriptures paul needed a team around him and in acts 18 there's a there was a couple by the name of 
Priscilla and Aquila. And that reminds me of Steve and Mary Tomaski. They were to the Freemans what Priscilla and Aquila were to Paul. And then you move on. The Joburg Church started up, and, and Steve and Mary were part of that start as Steve was the worship leader, but plus many, 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 many others. As I look around and I see families that, that have been here for years, and, and so it took, it took everybody, as Denny said last year or, or last week about the um, Christmas Eve service in this place packed out. Um, the, you know, in the mission, the mission, Pastor Denny told you, the number one mission of this church is to give them Jesus. And the no, number two mission was to meet the needs of the people. And again, what you heard about the amount coming in and all the people who pitched in and the thank yous that go out, we, we, you, we're still doing what the prayers were at the beginning, meeting the needs of the people in this community. Also, Mary reminds me personally of Lydia. Mary uh, has a uh, very uh, business-minded background, and, and, and she is very thoughtful, very prayerful, and Lydia did a couple things, in, and you can find that story in Acts 16, starting in verse 14. But the first thing Mary or Lydia did, Mary does, is worships God. She worshiped God. Mary is a prayer, I will say, a prayer partner for all of you without you even knowing that Mary prays for you all the time. Mary also, or Lydia also, was a persuader, but she was an encourager. Mary encourages us, especially my family, Shelly and myself, I know I go to you quite often for encouragement, and you're, you're there for us. Let me introduce Mary Tomaski this morning. I want you a standing ovation, please, for Mary. Yes. <laughs> Mary, thank you. I want to hand you that. But I want... To share, I want to share two scripture verses that the Lord gave me this morning. He's making this really tough on me. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul said to the first Thessalonian church, and I'm in chapter or verse or um, chapter five, um, first Thessalonians says, And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourself. And that's what we want. We want this church to be at peace. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll <laughs> I thought he was going to do my whole sermon here pretty quick. told myself this morning when I got up, you're not going to cry, you're not going to cry, you're not going to cry. <laughs> oh, I've got them everywhere. <laughs> and here I am. Um, the first thing I put on my paper was enjoy myself. So I'm going to enjoy myself with this word. Can you hear me okay? Because I'm going to move this all over the place. Um, all right. Let me take a second. First words were good morning. <laughs> good morning to all of you. Thank you for the dedication to our church fam family for the past 25 years. Whether you started out in the very first service or you were here for the first time today, um, this is a place of welcome. So welcome. And we can all give thanks for those 25 years, whether you were here or not. Give thanks for that. I have a dear friend here, Sandy, and uh, Pastor Tim already acknowledged her. She reminded me this week of a given word that she was given on February 21st, 2002. Am I correct? Yep. For the Johannesburg Christian Church. So I wanted to read that scripture for you. It's in Colossians. It's 3 through 12, and I think they're going to put it up there. Um, it's a little lengthy, but I think it deserves every single word. 
We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. For we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and of the love you have for your, all your saints because of the hope reserved for you in heaven. You have already heard about this hope in the word of truth, that's the gospel, that has come to you. It is, here, it is bearing fruit and growing all over the world, just as it what has among you since the day you heard it and came to the truly appreciative God's grace. We learned this from Ephoditus. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Our dearly loved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has told us about your love in the Spirit. For this reason, also since the day we heard this, we haven't stopped praying for you. We are asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of, this, of his will and all his wisdom and spiritual understanding so that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience, joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share the saint's inheritance in the light. He has rescued you, he has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the son he loves. In him we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. I think that embodies what this church is. And I would ask you just to keep that in your heart today and understand that those words were given a long time ago but we need to embrace them now, too. And we need to embrace them for the next 25 years. So thank you, Shandy, Sandy, for sharing that with me this week. I did remember those words, but I didn't remember all of them, so it's good to have a reminder. I have to be really honest with you. This morning, my struggle is real. Uh, the word that was given to me, um, I didn't want to do. I was... It was revealed to me, and I had a hard time. My head didn't want to do what my heart said. My heart didn't want to do what my head said. And then I stopped listening completely for quite a while. <laughs> pastor Tim had asked me about this several months ago, and I agreed. Because I think when your pastor asks you, you agree. And then you let the Holy Spirit deal with what's going on inside of you so that you can re receive that. Um, I came across... Um, in my struggle, I came across three little sentences that the Holy Spirit is using with me this morning. So I'm going to say those three little sentences, and then we're going to talk about each one of them individually. The first one is wisdom when you speak. The second one is thoughtfulness in your actions. And the last one is grace in your forgiveness. Wisdom when you speak. So I kind of looked up the definition of wisdom, and it's a quality of having knowledge and good judgment. And it was real important for me to think about this. It's a maturity and self-control in the delivery of the words we speak. It might be going in in your head differently than the way you should speak it. Maybe what you're dealing with in your head is between you and the Lord, but how you speak it is to your fellow believers. Wisdom from God helps you develop a biblical outlook that penetrates the deception and the distorted thoughts of this world. And we all know that this world is distorted. And we all know that we need to come back to where we belong. Wisdom is not what you know, but who you know in Christ. And I may repeat that several times because I keep that keeps coming to my mind. So I think I wrote it down several times. Oh, I wrote this page twice. There you go. I, I looked at this one. I just said that. <laughs> Wisdom is choosing to apply God's truth and principles to your daily relationships. I want to say that again. Wisdom is choosing to apply God's truth and principles to your daily relationships and situations. In Romans 12, verse 2, don't be conformed 
to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may, be, may discern what is good, pleasing, and the perfect will of God. It's so easy to be um, transformed in what's happening to you every day. It's so easy to just take that all on and not realize what really God has for you that day. So I would like to just tell you that it's through the wisdom that God gives you when you read your Bible, when you study, when you go to Bible studies, that's what brings you to a point of understanding what happens each day. Wisdom is choosing to apply God's truth and promote to your daily relationships. And I wrote this one twice, twice too. Boy, I'm supposed to give you two, a double message. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I was rewriting it today, and it's like, oh, my gosh. Oh, that's, that's pretty funny. See, I was supposed to smile. I'm smiling. <laughs> Gaining spiritual wisdom allows you to know the difference between what the Bible gives us is wise and what the world claims to be wise. Again, the words of the Bible are the wise. The words of the world, not so wise. And ours, our plan through Christ's love is to understand those things and discern what it is that we need to be wise about. Wisdom will help preserve us from trouble and disaster and guide us in knowing the difference between what is right and what is wrong. How many of us as children heard that? This is right, this is wrong. I think that's where we have to get back to sometimes. What is truly right and what is truly wrong? And live with those things. The second little sentence I said was thoughtfulness in your actions. And I really had to think about this one for a while because when you start examining your actions, you might not like what you see. <laughs> so uh, in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 5, and I'm going to have to get that one from my Bible. So don't judge anything prematurely before the Lord comes, who will both bring to light what is hidden in darkness and reveal the intentions of the hearts. And then praise will come to each one from God. Is that what I've got up there? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so don't judge anything prematurely. How many times have you seen something and you immediately judge it? You have to think about what you're doing. Thoughtfulness in your actions, how you judge things. You will be both, you will both, who will both bring the light and what is hidden in the darkness and reveal the intentions of the heart? Who does that? Your Lord God. Jesus brings that to you. So don't judge anything prematurely. Some of the words that put to mind for thoughtfulness were honesty, integrity, love, motive, compassion. Our works or our actions are not motivated and directed. Our works or actions are not motivated and directed by him if we are not rooted in our belief in Jesus Christ. Our motives could be directed by anything. Look at the internet. Look at the things that happen every single day in our lives. If we're motivated to act according to what's happening around us, I think all of us would be like little chickens <laughs> running around, you know, waiting for the next chop. Faith in Jesus enables us to be his vessels and allows us to speak spirit-inspired words and actions. You know, I write these one-liners down, and then I can't remember why I wrote them down. <laughs> there is a caution here, and it's about motives. The Bible teaches that God is as interested in our motives as in our behavior. Eventually, selfish and sinful motives produce selfish and sinful behavior. Eventually. Our motives show the condition of our heart. That's why a change of heart is needed if our motives are not pleasing to God. And I know how many times I've probably done something and not even thought about the motive until afterwards. Thank God he brings it to me afterwards so that I can take care of that. 
In Proverbs 20, 27, I get the big Bible and then I can't find the things. Okay. Um, Proverbs is an interesting book. There's so much in this to grab onto. And w me using one little verse here may not show the whole picture, but it just struck me as something that we needed to think about. Proverbs 20:27 20, states, The Lord's lamp sheds light on a person's life, searching the innermost parts. Who's searching your innermost parts? Are you doing that? Or are you letting the Lord search those parts for your motives? We need the Lord to penetrate our humanness. Again, it's not what you know. It's who you know in Christ. And the last little sentence was a grace in our forgiveness. Now, first of all, I thought when I s found this, I thought it said space in our forgiveness, and I kept thinking, space in our forgiveness. I can't quite go there. I can't quite figure it out. But then I looked at it and examined it a little, a little better, and it did say grace in our forgiveness. That's our mercy. That's our salvation. That's our pardon. That's our release. Forgiveness is not based on the magnitude of the sin, but the magnitude of the forgiver's love. No sin is too great for God's complete and unconditional love. In Romans 8, verses 37 and 39, through 39, No, in all these things we are now more conquerors through him who loved us, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can even separate us from God's love. So forgiving others is at the core of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. It's a necessary part of our walk to be obedient to the voice or the spirit when we are called to forgive. You don't have to ask the reasons why you should forgive. You should just do it, and he's going to reveal to you what that is for you, what grace is for you. Grace is a big favor we do for someone who doesn't deserve it, and we do it without expecting anything in return. Again, look back at your motives. When the Bible says God saved you by his grace, it means that God has done you the biggest favor of all. Think about the biggest favor you ever had. It's bigger than that. He has pardoned you from the death sentence. By grace, we are forgiven for our sin and restored to full fellowship with God. Accept his forgiveness as a gift. And then you do what with it? You pass it on. You know, we are managers of the mysteries of God. And I kind of had to think about that when I wrote it down. I thought, managers of the mysteries of God. Because it is a mystery how he works. But it's a mystery we need to embrace. Each given the Holy Spirit the Spirit inhabits us not to be mute or an occasional nudge. The Spirit lives. It's a river of living water. Life-giving nourishment that flows through us to others. We follow Jesus and his word to experience the joy and victory intended for us. He intended this for us. It isn't anything that we can ask for every day. It's intended. He gives it to us every single day. Let every action, word, and thought be good and helpful though, so that we can encourage others. In first, there's first Thessalonians wow, 5, 16 through 18. Can I find that? Oh, I didn't put that in there. Oh, pause. Everybody smile. Oh, all right. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, just as in, 
fact, thank you, you are doing. Okay, that was not quite my inter... Okay. So what this says for Thessalonians, this is paraphrasing for me, rejoice always, gain that inner joy, rejoice, pray constantly, never give up. We've talked about that. You never give up. The last 25 years, prayer has never left this building. Be thankful in all circumstances. That's a big one. That's a real big one. Because circumstances can really change your life. But again, he's with you. He's going to pull you through all those circumstances. We sang that this morning. For this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. That means we belong and we trust him. It is his will we don't need to question it. I know it's easy to use your mind and question things, but take it to your heart and make it live there. Just as these three little sentences written on a napkin, and this is the hard part for me, <laughs> written on a napkin, where's my napkin? Oh, that would be really funny if I didn't bring it. Wait a minute. Sorry. All right, Lord, this is very interesting. See, now this is a real joke for me because this is exactly the way my husband would have this happen to me. <laughs> he would exactly get the greatest joy out of me struggling to try to find There it is. They, I thought that was my Kleenex to blow my nose. That would have been great. <laughs> oh, that is his, his sense of humor for sure. That is truly his sense of humor. All right. So the words I told you about were uh, words that I found in a box of memorabilia. Um, on 2015, um, September 15th, two days before... Steve went to see the Lord. He, in the morning, wrote those words on a napkin. Wisdom when we speak, thoughtfulness in our actions, and grace in our forgiveness. Happy 25th. Mary. Yes, a hand clap for sure. <laughs> Don't blow your nose up. <laughs> that would be awful. <laughs> but exactly what would happen. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Okay. You're good. You <laughs> so, uh, uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, and that's the wisdom that comes from somebody who stays in the Lord. It's the thoughtfulness of, of even for the Holy Spirit to reveal that to her as after I asked her to speak and she was praying, um, I went to visit her about, I don't know, a few weeks ago. And, and uh, you know, Mary told me about those words. And it was just like, wow, wow, would that be a good message? Wisdom thoughtfulness, and, and, of course, grace. We all need grace. We need grace in our lives, and grace is the empowerment of God. And so thank you, thank you. Um, I, I just, it's a blessing that this church is going to continue on into 2024 and, and many more years after that. Um, just keep praying. Just keep believing. Believe in your family when you see things going a little bit awry. Um, it, God has this. God has this. Um, we're struggling in many different areas. We're in a country that just has so much good things, but at the same time, so many strange things. So just know that we have God's wisdom that we can fall on. The only place you're going to find God's wisdom is in the written word of God. The only place you're going to find out how to do things with that wisdom and have thoughtfulness is in the Word of God, like she used the uh, scriptures out of Proverbs. 
in the grace and mercy and forgiveness. The only place we're going to find that is in your heart. It's in your heart. If you have Jesus Christ on your lips, what last week, what Pastor Denny spoke about, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, and you take that from head knowledge to heart knowledge, and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you are forgiven. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. If anybody needs Jesus Christ, let's all bow our heads. Let's all bow our heads. If there's anybody out there that needs the Lord Jesus, please, please, just say, Jesus is Lord. Right where you're at. Right where you're at. Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that that Easter story about Good Friday and the resurrection is truly true. That God raised Jesus from the dead out of the grave. Believe that. And you are saved. And it's going to be a journey. It's going to be a walk. It always is. But there's others that have been struggling. Just keep calling on Jesus. Because after that verse about confessing Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, it says, For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord, whosoever in your struggles, whosoever, wherever you're at, you call on the name of the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. He'll save you. He'll come and save you. He has grace for you that Mary talked about. He has thoughtfulness upon you. God thinks about you. He loves you. He thought about you a couple thousand years ago when he sent his son for you. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you, Jesus. We give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name, amen and amen. You have a great week. Um, okay, some of the ladies are going to tell you about some food as you're exiting, but um, you have a great week this week. And thank you again to every pantry worker, every single person that even um, has helped, prayed, whatever you did. Thank you.